trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands.
us pray. So desperately we need you, Lord. So faithful are you to meet our desperate needs. Do it again, we pray, Father. Even during this time, so that might, we might feed on fresh bread from heaven and live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And we will ask that in expectation, in Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever been thinking about a particular verse of Scripture, and then, as you were, part of it just grabbed you? That happened to me recently. I was out walking one morning and reciting to myself Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So like I said, I was out, it was before daylight, I was walking and praying, and, and along and during that time, I was fighting the temptation to worry, to be anxious. So I was trying to take some action on that, and I was reciting to myself those familiar verses. Uh, by the way, it's the very best way to talk to yourself is to tell yourself Scripture. Then you know that everything you're telling yourself is right. As I was reminding myself of those verses, I came to that phrase, which I kind of highlighted verbally just a moment ago, with thanksgiving. And it stopped me. Because right then I realized I've been doing a lot of praying, but not a lot of thanksgiving. When I'm being tempted to worry, God tells me instead, pray. And one of the ways he tells me to pray is with thanksgiving. So I stopped how I was praying, and I, I started to give thanks. I started to, with my mind, reach out and think, what do I have to be thankful for? What kinds of things do I have to be thankful for? And before long, quite a catalog of things began to go through my mind. Thank you, Lord, for how you have en encouraged me recently. Thank you, Lord, for how you saved me and forgave me and have protected me in Christ for 45 years now. Thank you, Lord, for how you've given me a, a godly, loving wife and two daughters who love him. Thank you. Thank you, God, for how you have filled your word with promises like Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And pretty soon as I was going through that exercise of giving thanks, uh, not only did it warm my heart, but pretty soon that promise became my experience. Peace was guarding my heart and my mind from worry. Ever had an experience like that? I bet you have. I bet you have. So I'm thankful God showed me I was leaving out Thanksgiving. Well, Thanksgiving is an important holiday, but it's an even more important attitude of the heart. Well, what is Thanksgiving? Not the holiday, but the attitude. Probably the simplest, simplest definition we can give, and one that's commonly given, is thankfulness is gratitude to God for what he's done. Gratitude to God for what he's done. And that's why some have called thankfulness the gratitude attitude. So we should pray, but we should pray with thankfulness. Why should we pray with thankfulness? Why especially should we pray with lots of thankfulness when we're tempted to worry? Well, basically for this reason, because thankfulness is remembering what God has done and being grateful for it. It's looking back at what he's done in the past 
what he's done to rescue me from worries and troubles of every kind. So that then I can look forward with renewed confidence that he's going to do it again. I look back to see what he's done so that I'm in a new way equipped to look forward with confidence for what he'll do again. Do it again, Lord. You've done it before. Do it again. When we remember what he has done, our faith is made stronger because we see him who he is. We see him at work keeping his promises. It makes us stronger to trust him, again, for what he will do. It's a sort of, it, it produces a sort of grateful faith. So when we're tempted to worry about something that needs to happen or that might happen or that hasn't yet happened or that there's a possibility it could happen, so I better worry about it anyway, God says, Pray with thanksgiving because it will increase your grateful faith as you remember what I've done and give you a rising certainty in what I'll do again. So I thought it would be helpful for us this morning since this is sort of our, our thanksgiving service uh, out of the year, the, the one that's specifically dedicated to that. I thought it would be helpful for us then and, and would help because some of us came in this morning, you don't have to raise your hand if this is you, but some of you came in and, you, and you're worried, you're anxious. There's something eating you on the inside because you know something needs to happen or you knew, know something needs to change or you know something in yourself that needs to change, etc., etc. Well, how is God's peace like a squadron of soldiers going to guard our hearts and minds in Christ if we pray with gratitude? So we're going to look at five areas of life that the Bible tells us we should be thankful to God. So let's start, first of all, with, number one, thankfulness for God's goodness. And that's a huge one. That's a huge one. Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Just ask the Lord during this time that he would grant you grace that your ear would be open to hear his word. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. That's the way you come in. And his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. First Chronicles 16, 34. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. God's goodness, for which we're to give thanks, is that, it's that characteristic of his that causes him to show mercy and grace and compassion to his creatures, to his people. God's goodness is showing love and compassion where we need it, when we need it. J.I. Packer made this famous statement a long time ago. He said, God is good in some ways towards all people, but he is good in all ways towards some people. Let me repeat that. God is good in some ways towards all people, but he is good in all ways towards some people. You and I, as believers, are part of the sum to whom God is good in all ways. To be good to us in all ways means, in relation to God, that there is nothing that he is, there is nothing that he has that he will hold back from us. He becomes our father in Christ, and therefore everything that God is and everything that God has is ours in Christ. And of course, everyone knows that Romans 8, 28 passage. God is good in all ways towards us as his people. He causes everything to work together for good to those of us who love him and are called according to his purpose. And God's goodness to, our, to us, which we saw in the passages that we read, is a covenant goodness. It means that God has solemnly promised to always supply our needs with the highest goal always in mind. The highest goal, Romans 8, 29 and 30 tell us, is to be like his son. Just to be like his son? To be like his son to prepare us ultimately for his presence in heaven forever. Wow. 
So when's the last time that you were worried that you stopped in your worry and you thanked God that he's your father and he's good in all ways in Christ to you? God would have to stop being God in order not to be good to you. He would have to stop being God because he has staked his name on his promise, his covenant, to be good to you. I hope that helps you be thankful. <laughs> helps me be thankful. So we should be thankful when we're worried. We should be thankful for God's goodness. And we're going to have some opportunity, kind of as we're closing out our meal a little bit later on this morning. So don't, don't miss it. And as things you're thankful for, God's goodness you're thankful for, come up in your mind, kind of put a little check in the box so you can share that later. Now, the next four things that we're going to look at that Scripture tells us to be thankful for, what, what they really are are ways that God shows His goodness to us. So second, the Bible tells us to be thankful for God's rescues. God's rescues. This is God's goodness that frees us from trouble and captivity of all kinds. Psalm 35, 9 and 10, Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord, exulting in His salvation. I like this, the way he puts it here. All my bones shall say, O Lord, who is like you, delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him, the poor and needy from him who robs him. Well, if we have any life behind us at all, one of the things we know is that life is full of problems. It, it's full of problems that are too big for us. Unexpected bills that are bigger than our bank account. Have one of those lately? Temptations that you just don't have the power to keep resisting. Or someone at school or someone at work or someone who lives next door that just seems to get their greatest joy from making life difficult for you. The world, the flesh, the devil, all too strong for us unless God in his goodness comes to our rescue time and time and time again. So maybe it goes something like this as you're rehearsing God's rescues. I didn't worry today when that doctor bill came and was twice what I expected. Rescue. I didn't worry. I thought the best of him today when... He was not thinking the best of me. Rescue. I didn't get angry and mutter under my breath when that guy cut me off on the roundabout. Rescue. How many times recently has God been your rescuer? Were you thankful? Did you remember to be thankful? Did it cause your heart to erupt in thankfulness? So the next time trouble stares you in the face and you respond, will you respond in grateful prayer? My Father is my rescuer. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, rescue. Who heals all your diseases, Rescue, who redeems your life from the pit. Rescue, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. And before we move away from this area of giving thanks for God's rescues, let's think about just for a moment, and we'll return when we look at the rescuer at the end. Let's think about God's greatest rescue. We read it a little bit of it, or we sang a little bit of it this morning. Paul puts it in great poetic form for us, 1 Corinthians 15, starting with 54. He says, death is swallowed up in victory as though death were a great uh, enemy, uh, a great personified enemy. Oh, death, looking right into the face, where is your victory? That, that means I'm not going to die? No, I'm not going to die a second death, but I will die the first death. But I look it right in the eye. Where is your victory? Where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory, the rescue, 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've ever woken up in, in the morning and you thought, I'm so glad that I'm not Christian, the, the main character in Pilgrim's Progress. I'm so glad that I don't, I don't walk through life every day as he did before the cross with this massive burden of guilt on my... Do you remember what it was like to feel guilty? Do you remember what it was like not to have a good conscience? Do you remember what it was like to not be able to pray and know that the one you were praying to had any good thoughts in your direction? I remember. That's not my life anymore. I don't carry that burden anymore because I have been rescued. The burden has been taken away. I'm free from the guilt of sin, the power of sin in the Lord Jesus Christ. Free, rescued. Boy, if anyone on earth ought to be a thankful people, it's you and me. Third, the Bible tells us to be thankful for God's answers to prayer. God showing his goodness and hearing us as his children and answering, addressing our needs. Psalm 138, we read from Psalm 138 this, this morning. I want to emphasize verse 3. I give thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down before your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. Here it is. On the day I called, you answered me. And my strength of soul, you increased. George Mueller, and most people, most believers have heard of George Mueller, who founded the Bristol, uh, England orphanages. And uh, anyway, that whole story, read books about George Mueller. But he said he knew of at least some 50,000 specific answers to prayer to requests that he had made to God alone. Not to other people. He didn't ask God for something and then go out trying to manipulate those around him to be part of the answer. 50,000, and see, he, he meticulously recorded these things. Over 50,000 prayers, he himself prayed to God alone. And because he was so specific, you see, he knew when God answered. In 1871, there was an article in the London Times, and it gave some statistics. It said, since 1836... And this is in regard to the Bristol orphanages and George Mueller. 23,000 children had been educated in the schools associated with the orphanages. And many thousands had gone through the orphanages themselves, overseen by Mueller. The article says 275,000 Bibles, 85,000 Testaments, 29 million religious books had been issued and distributed. Plus, at the same time as all this is going on, the support of 189 missionaries. George Mueller, as he got older, began to travel around the world. Uh, they say he traveled over 200,000 miles, and this, uh, there weren't any jets back then. Over 200,000 miles preaching the gospel of Christ. And his testimony is, through all of that, he never made one request of another person for financial support. Nor did he ever go into debt. He asked God, and God answered. And as a result, George Mueller was a thankful man. He was a thankful man. Because he, got, he saw God continuously answer prayer. Well, here's an exercise you could think about this Thanksgiving season, perhaps... This afternoon or sometime, you can go home, you can sit down, you can take a notebook and open it up, or a piece of paper, or open your laptop even. There's more room. And record some prayers that God has heard and answered in your life. Recent past, distant past. Next to that list, and I hope it's a long list, and I hope you have to stop because I don't have any more time, or room, or paper. But next to that list, then in bold letters, write, Thank you, Father, do it again. Thank you, Father, do it again. And I dare say it'll be an exercise of grateful faith. Fourth, the Bible teaches us 
that we're to be thankful to God for other people. Philemon, verse 4, Paul to Philemon. He says, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. That's pretty much in all of Paul's letters, that kind of thanksgiving. I thank my God when I remember you in my prayers because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. Paul wrote to Timothy instructing him, this is how the church ought to act when it gets together. He said, first of all then, I urge, and especially this is how the men of the church ought to act when they're together. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. So who has God put in your life that you should be thankful for? Our fellow members here? Absolutely. Your spouse? You better. <laughs> Children? Yes, someone who is a special confidant or counselor or encouraging, uh, encourager to, yes. We should be thankful for those kinds of people. Uh, just a side note, do we deserve those people? No, but what is our tendency? Our tendency is to think, I deserve more of them. You know, the world seems to be scant with people who know just how wonderful I am. It's easy to think that kind of way. No, we don't deserve all of those people for whom we should be thankful that God has put in our life. Um, they are gifts from him. But how about, how about people who are a real challenge in our life? Have you ever stopped to thank God for putting someone in your life that you wished was not in your life? Just think, that person, and we all have them or have had them or will have them. If we had had them, we'll have them again. And some of us are those people in someone else's life. <laughs> think about that person that God put in your life, not by accident, on purpose, that you maybe, if you were honest, wish they weren't in your life. Um, again, are they an accident? Not a chance. Not a chance. God picked them for you. They are customized for you, for your office, for your school, for your neighbor. They're there on purpose. He picked them for you, and he did it for a reason. So we should be thankful. What is the reason? Well, Paul expressed that reason in 2 Corinthians 12, 10, here's what he says. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Lord, thank you for, thank you that they're in my life on purpose from you so that I will feel my Weakness, so that I will see the ungodliness that in my pride I forget is very much woven into my heart. I forget how selfish I am. Lord, thank you for putting this person in my life to show me that. Thank you for putting them in my life so that I will lean harder on you for grace by faith than I ever have before. Lord, help me to love them with the same love that you look at me and love me with. I don't have that kind of love in myself. Make me strong to love, Lord. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you for this person, but also thank you that you will answer prayer to give me everything I need to care for them your way. Amen. And finally, fifth, and this is where we reach the peak and we've already visited this, but we're going to go a little further. God tells us to be thankful for Jesus Christ. So a couple of weeks ago, at the end of 2 Corinthians 9, you remember that very brief verse, thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. What is his inexpressible gift? His inexpressible gift is his son. 
Are you thankful for the Son? Have you been thankful for Jesus Christ today? Have you been thankful that God is the kind of God who in mercy and love showed his goodness by giving his only Son so that as he worked in your heart sovereignly by grace, you would believe in him and not reject him. It's important that we remember that just like the people we were talking about, the greatest of all those gifts from God is Jesus. I did not earn his love. I do not uh, in any way uh, live to merit his love. He is God's inexpressible gift. And as Paul says, he is a gift too great for words, but I should keep trying and I should use words, words of thankfulness. As Paul writes in Second uh, Colossians 2, 6, he says, therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Abounding in thanksgiving means uh, never think, never think that you've been thankful enough. Never think that you've been thankful enough. Like a glass under a faucet. It, it fills and then it spills. Well, what Paul says is, because you're in Christ, let the understanding of the gospel and the fact that you have been given Christ and placed into Christ and all that is true of him and what he has accomplished in his cro cross and resurrection is true of you. Let that fill you so that you spill over first to God and then to others constantly with thankfulness. Let it fill over to your family. Be spilling on them this all the time. Oh, that guy is so thankful. He is so thankful. Wow. He's just, I got to wipe the thankfulness off of me tonight. That'd be good. That'd be good. Let it spill over to family. Let it spill over to friends. Let it spill over to Facebook. Facebook. So what is the end of this? Don't worry. Pray. When you pray, pray with lots and lots of thankfulness to God. Use words to thank him for all that he has done for his goodness, for his rescues, for his answers to prayer, for the people, including the people that we talked about in your life. But most of all, be filled and spill over with thankfulness for Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, it's so clear that we're to be thankful. And your word says, in everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's so clear that as we should always pray, we should always give thanks as well. We should always give thanks because we have nothing but what to be thankful for before you. So grant us grace, Lord, to fulfill uh, literally who we are and what we're called to by being thankful. And grant us grace to see that if we're not being thankful, something's wrong. Something's awry with our heart. Grant us grace to be thankful people. Grant us grace today, even as we eat together and are thankful and fellowship and are thankful and then have a time of thanksgiving for which we publicly share thanks. Grant us grace to do it well, to be filled and to spill over with gratitude to you. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're not going to be thankful, are you? <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know if some of you heard, but there was a lady in Watertown Pools this past week. She said, that is my neighbor's daughter. And if I could ask you to just pray for that man and that family and for the man in Iowa. Sure. Minister. Minister. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful to have the privilege and the calling as priest of God to come to your throne in Jesus' name on the behalf of this family. Not knowing the situation of those who are alive, extended, near and extended family, we ask 
that there would certainly be comfort and there would be grace to know how to think about it biblically, but we also pray that you would fill their life with people who, who have words of hope, words of comfort and consolation, even people who have had to be comforted because of their suffering that can comfort them with the comfort you've given. Please, Father, we ask, bless Dave and Leanne as they minister to their neighbors and everyone else that you open doors for to give opportunity. Fill them with your spirit. Set a guard over their mouth. Guide every word. And uh, may it be to your honor and glory and even to life, eternal life, for some of the people who are connected to this woman. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for asking, Dave. Uh, we're going to have uh, something projected up here in a moment. Guess what that is? <laughs> that's, that's what this room's going to look like very shortly. Uh, so, Rhonda, did you have some things you wanted to say right off about what's next? Yeah.